Hi, my name is David Mulligan. I am the program director for the Scriptwriters Network. Uh, welcome to another episode of Writer's Block here on Virtual Channel Network. Uh, today we are going to be talking with success stories of alumni that have been with the Scriptwriters Network. And today we are talking to Steve Barr and Tina Anderson. Uh, Steve Barr and Tina Anderson are writing partners and they have a really awesome development deal going with Disney. Hi guys. How you doing? Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's just get started and start asking the questions. Um, all right, first question, and I always love this. Uh, what were some of the influences that led you to decide, I want to become a screenwriter? Uh, I think the first thing, the first and foremost thing for me was just being a voracious reader as a child. It just opened up the world of discovery and imagination for me. What was your, what was your favorite? And my first, well, my favorite movie, though, that really made me want to look into screenwriting was Star Wars. Oh, okay. And, and actually, I was actually depressed when I saw, saw Star Wars because I thought to myself, how can they do that? How, did, how does that work? I, I just thought, how, how is anyone capable of making something so cool? Yeah. How could I ever do that? But yet, you know, I wanted to try. So, cool. here I am. Cool. Did you have uh, reading... Did you have any favorite writers that really spoke to you? Um, everything. I, I read it all. You know, whatever I can get my hands on. I don't want to pick just one. It's, Very it's cool. hard to do that. I got a degree in acting, of all things, from nice. USC. And uh, it wasn't until after I graduated and was auditioning that I realized I'm an average-looking white guy in a town full of average-looking white guys. Oh. And so uh, a friend of mine named Danny Grossman who also had gotten a degree in acting, he and I were having the same problems, that we couldn't find any parts that were more than, would you like some more water, Mr. Smith? <laughs> you know, an audition against 300 guys for that, you know, one line. Right. Um, so we decided, hey, we were both, had been writing for a while, and, uh, you know, short stories and that sort of, never tried screenwriting before, so we gave that a shot and wrote something really terrible. But <laughs> that was the first thing. And the, uh, I'd always, I always came to it from a, I read voraciously when I was a kid to like like Tina. I think that's you know you get most of your really great training as a screenwriter when you're like 10 to 15 yeah. years old, yeah. you know, sitting in a room and, and learning the the blocks of storytelling. You know, all that other technical stuff comes later, but knowing what makes a good story versus a bad story is really important. And you get that when you're young. Yeah. And um, so yeah, a lot of my my influences were genre stuff. Okay, so how many scripts did it take until you got your first big break? Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure because there are half scripts in there somewhere, mm -hmm. um, but I would say somewhere around 13, 14, 15, somewhere around there. Wow. Yeah, written with different, like four different writing partners over the course of time. Oh, so you prefer a writing partner? I not necessarily prefer, but I enjoy. Okay. You know, I've done my own solo work. I've done worked with Tina, worked with a few other people, and it's always a different experience, and you learn different things working with different people. So because it's always a different dynamic with each partner. Exactly. exactly. Right. And you're working on different things with different people. You know, and you and we don't like to be pigeonholed into we're only this team or only working with that person or only working on these types of projects. We like to think we have range, mm. and we're developing you know different projects along those lines with different people in totally opposite polar you know, genres, it's, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, but I have more, more depressing news. My, my uh, scripts that I, it took me to get this deal with Steve at Disney, are, is, it's misleading because I did three TV specs. That's how I, I kind of taught myself how to write and by looking at TV specs and I don't feel that that's enough because I, I feel like I did myself a disservice by not writing 13 more features or something like that. And, so I've been learning it the hard way as we've, as we've gone along, but um, it, you have a great idea and people really want to get involved with that and that sort of motivates you to, you know, uh, up your, your learning curve very right, quickly. Raise the bar. Very sure. quickly. So it, it was fast for me, but I don't necessarily think that that works best for everyone. So. Mm. How many years would you say of... of uh... um, well, I've been out here since 99. So. Yeah, I graduated in 94, started writing probably 96, I think. Cool, very yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, so, so 
what was your first big break and how did it happen? Uh, the quick version, I'll try to do it quickly. I uh, moved out to Los Angeles from Montana and just immersed myself in a world of screenwriting and joined the Scriptwriters Network right. and um, started meeting people like Steve Barr and started hanging out on websites called Word Player, which is run by Terry Rossio and Ted Elliott. Awesome site. And yeah, it's amazing. I recommend it highly. Um, anyway, the, the big deal was trying to learn the craft and come up with a great idea at the same time. So I came up with this idea about a plant lady who talks to plants mm. and it occurred to me, well, what if the plants talk back? And it just seemed pretty exciting to me and I didn't know what to do with it other than that. I'd only written the three you know, TV specs at that point. So I enlisted Steve Barr's help. Um, I said, hey, why don't you write this feature with me? Won't this be cool? You know, it'll be sort of a Disney, Pixar type thing. Well, let's yes. give it a shot. It'll be a romantic comedy. It'll be great. We've met on Word Player. Uh, and every once or twice a year, we'll have a face-to-face -face type thing where the local people who post quite a bit on the forums there, we sort of know each other's personalities. And we had, you know, gone and saw a movie and had a beer with a group of the big, you know, the Word Players. This is also and, uh, where the film group evolved yeah. out of this. That would be people. the uh, SoCal film group. Yeah. 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 Uh, so sh I get this email out of the blue. I was sort of known as a serial collaborator because I was collaborating with lots of people. And I was just looking for someone that you know wanted to be an up and comer just like me that seemed to have his you know act together so to speak. Right. Little did I know. Huh. This was uh, uh, 2001 actually, and mm -hmm. so seven years ago. Oh, that's sad. It's a long time. No, no. <laughs> and I had never written a romantic comedy myself either. So I'm like, hey, this will be like a six month project. I'll learn how to write a romantic comedy. I'll get to work with a new partner because that's always fun. And um, Tina happened to know Terry a bit better than I. Terry Rossio, who right. runs Word Player, uh, and who is a you know a big writer himself. And Ted Elliott. And Ted Elliott is part of the Pirates, yeah, Shrek, Masked Shrek, yeah. Aladdin, and I think. The new Lone Ranger. Um, I think. Shrek might have just come out. This was 01. I'm not good with time, but yeah. um, but anyway, Tara, T Tina had mentioned it to Terry. Oh, I had this idea. There's this uh, shy plant lady who doesn't talk to humans, so she had talked to her plants. And then one day they all start talking back. And he said, no, "That's a pretty cool idea. Can I work on that with you guys?" Wow. And we had to say, "Ah, well, let me." Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. I don't even yes. think. I don't even think it was three seconds. I don't was, think so. Yeah. yeah. And so that was the, um, it's kind of the slowest big break in history. It's a snail's pace, you know, yeah. but we get there. Because that was 2001. We uh, started working with Ted and Terry to break the story in 2001. We were it optioned a digital domain right. uh, for a couple of years. Nice, yeah. nice. Guys that made Titanic that, and all yeah, that. that. That establishes a credibility mm -hmm. that you right. can really run with. Right. Exactly. And then Ted and Terry got very busy with pirates and we're still busy with our lives and, and, right. and you know working on other stuff at the same time because you're supposed to have more than one iron in the fire. That's right. Um, and then we ended up transitioning into a deal with Disney finally. Took it wide yeah. and everybody else in town sort of went, eh, maybe not for us. They were either scared off by the animation or, or the fact that the story maybe wasn't what they were hoping for at this point. Um, they didn't really know us, that kind of thing. But you know, I think with um, Ted and Terry's influence and leadership in this, it's. You know, it does help to have good relationships. 